You heard of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa? In his own lifetime, people worshipped him as God. He will be talking to his congregation of people and he will say, just wait. He will go inside and ask his wife, what's cooking today? His wife Sharada felt so ashamed of this. He said, no point crying, it's come, time has come. because they don't want to be clients to bad designers. <laughs> now I want you to… whatever I say now, I want you to understand the right context because this can be easily misunderstood. What is enlightenment? There was a time in sixties, there used to be ads in California saying, if you go to India, it will take twelve years, twenty-five dollars, one hour, you can be enlightened here. There used to be ads where uh, all you have to do is wear headphones, wear some fancy looking goggles and you would have an they'll also put something into you together. It gave you such a psychedelic experience. So, people advertise. So, what is enlightenment? You know, repeatedly we're going on saying, asutoma sadgamaya, asutoma sadgamaya. What it means is, you're trying to invoke yourself, I want to move from untruth to truth. There are many, many ways of looking at it, to put it very, very simply. The fundamental untruth about you is, right now what is not you, you are experiencing as myself. This is a piece of earth, repeatedly we have gone over this. But right now, you experience this as myself. This is an untruth, isn't it? If I experience this uh, a sofa, as myself, definitely I need a couch, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir? So, if you think I am this vessel, you're definitely a case, isn't it? Treatment needed or no? Hmm? Yes. Yes, if I think I am a vessel, I need a treatment, but my body, this was also dug out of the planet. This was also dug out of the planet. Yes? This is also piece of earth, this is also piece of earth, isn't it? If I can think this is me, why can't I think this is me? Looks like I have an additional chamber in my head. Nice, isn't it? Extra chamber would help. But for sure it's madness, isn't it? This being me is definitely madness. Please look at it. This being me, is it not madness? Your only comfort is everybody is like this. Yes, that's how it is in the asylum. <laughs> that's how it is. Just because everybody is like you, that doesn't make it the right thing. I know we are a democratic country. Majority rules, whatever the majority says, that becomes the truth. But that is not how it works in the existence. What is, is is, what is not, is not is, that's all. If you are in line with it, life works one way. If you are not aligned with it, it works another way. It's as simple as that. So, if you realize, I am not this, not intellectually, if experientially, if a clear separation happened, well, it would be natural to keep this aside and walk away, isn't it? 
you are calling it by all kinds of bad words like death. No. I thought I am this vessel and continuously I carried it. One day I realized, oh my God, this is not me. It's natural for me to keep it down and said, yeah, isn't it? Isn't it so? Yes. So that's all they did. You are exaggerating it. Enlightened people leaving their body and going away. <laughs> when they realized this is not it, they just kept it aside. If they had some more business, they could pick it up. They no business, they kept it and went. Sensible way to live or not? If you have business with this vessel, you carry it around. You no business with it, you leave it there. So when the realization happens, ninety-nine percent of the time, enlightenment and leaving the body happens at the same time. Unless you understand the mechanics of the body, you can't hold on to the body. People who are in the path of devotion, usually you will see most of them will die young. It's not death. The moment they realized, they kept it aside and walked away. You will see right through history, any number of yogis and realized beings always live in the range of between twenty-eight to thirty-six years. That's where they live. Have you noticed this? There are… So who, India is replete with such people. That's the time they live. You heard of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa? You heard of Vivekananda? He was the first yogi who came to United States in 1893, he was the first yogi. His guru was Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. He is a devotee, he has a mother goddess and he is devoted and he is… he is in a different way altogether. In his own lifetime, people worshipped him as God. He was not crucified, he was worshipped because his presence and this thing was so phenomenal. But he was mad about food. He will be talking to his congregation of people and he will say, just wait. He will go inside and ask his wife, what's cooking today? His wife Sharada felt so ashamed of this. She said, what is your problem? Even I am not bothered about food, what is your problem? We see you as God, what is this madness about food? He said, that's okay, but what's cooking? <laughs> One day she felt so ashamed of this and she told him, I'm ashamed of you. Why are you mad about food? So he said, you know in that part of the country, always food comes on a, a large… You know in India we don't eat on plates like this, we eat on a plate like this. It's called a thali. A plate with served food is called thali. He said, the day you bring the thali to me, the day you bring this food to me, if I show no interest in the food, you must know there are only three days left. He said this and seven years passed after that. After seven years, one day, he always had this habit of sitting on a swing and eating. So he would sit on the swing and eat. She brought the thali and he looked away. She burst out crying. Suddenly she realized, only three days left. He said, no point crying, it's come, time has come. Three days later he left. So he was using his desire for food consciously to kind of stay with the body. If he doesn't desire food, he will go. So every day telling himself, food, 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 you know. That's not his nature, but he's creating the desire just to keep it going all the time. He sits here in the satsang and if the experience becomes big, immediately he gets up and goes and says, what's cooking, what's today, I want to eat this, I want to eat that. Just thinking about food, desire, creating a conscious desire for food just to stay glued. 
Either you must create a desire like this, you… there are other kinds of tricks or you must understand the mechanics of the body. Understanding the mechanics of the body takes a certain amount of involvement, it doesn't just come. Realization can happen in a moment, understanding won't happen in a moment, it takes lifetimes of work.